Dear students, in this module, I'm going to talk about the data file formats that are there to contain the mass spectrometry based proteomics data. You would know that a mass spectrometer is used to measure the mass over charge ratios of proteins or peptides. So once you ionize a protein and you or a peptide and then you inject it into the chamber of a mass spectrometer, then it gets deflected according to its mass by the very big magnetic field that is there in a mass spectrometer. So these deflections are essentially measured as electrical signals that represent the strength and the magnitude of the signal. So once this signal is measured, it needs to be translated into the mass over charge ratio. This ratio can then be written in the form of a, a file on a computer that is attached to the mass spectrometer. Along with the mass over charge ratios that are output to the computer, you also get the relative abundance. So the relative abundance essentially means the quantity of a specific uh, protein or peptide with a specific mass over charge ratio as compared to the other uh, molecules within the mass spectrometer. In this slide, I'm showing you a mass spectrum. As you can see, on the horizontal axis, we have the mass over charge ratio. And on the vertical axis, we have the relative abundances. So once this molecule, which in this case is toluene C7H8, which is of course not a protein. So in this case, the molecular weight measured by the mass spectrometer will be 7 atoms of carbon multiplied by 12 so that's equal to 84 8 atoms of hydrogen multiplied by 1 so that is equal to 8 so you sum them up and you should get a molecular weight that is 92 so you get some peaks here that are very close to 90 or 92 so this molecule may have been protonated or deprotonated to be represented by these two peaks. And this is how the mass spectrum looks like. As you can see, there are some other peaks as well that are reported. So these may just be fragments of this molecule or in this case, the smaller peaks. These can be the other isotopes that are forming toluene. So dear students, once you have this mass spectrum, then you need to output the data from the mass spectrometer onto a computer disk. Now, there are multiple mass spectrometers that are there in the market. You can use any one of these mass spectrometer from the market. So the main companies that are making these mass spectrometers include Agilent, Brooker, Waters, Shimatsu, ABI, and so on and so forth. The reason for sharing these names with you is that each of these companies has its own data file format. So they organize the mass over charge ratio and the relative abundances of the protein and peptides in a specific way that is their own. Now each company has its own format, which is shown here in this table. For instance, Agilent gives you a .d or .yep file or micro mass, Perkin Elmer, Waters, Thermo Excalibur. They give you the raw file format. So all of these formats are binary formats. You cannot read them yourself by opening them in any text editor. So essentially, two points need to be taken from this table. One that each manufacturer has its own data file format and two, that these data formats are actually binary. You cannot read them yourself, so you need to convert these raw data file formats into human legible uh, forms. So the open formats that are there, we're going to talk about them in detail later, include MZXML, MGF, MZData, MZML, and so on and so forth. So by looking at the raw file formats that are there in binary, you can convert them using online tools into open data formats that are there for you 
and you can read them yourself as well. So in conclusion, multiple data file formats exist from each vendor, instrument manufacturer and uh, you can look at each one of the uh, da uh, data formats that are output and convert them into open file formats which, which are readable by the eye. And also several interoperability standards exist such as MZXML which can help you to translate data between two different instruments.